Welcome to the show, guys. Today we have James Calvert on the podcast. And funny enough, this episode was actually recorded prior to this whole show even launching. So it was one of my very first interviews. The reason why it hasn't been published is because it had some audio issues that needed to be doctored and and fixed before you know it was really listenable. Uh, James is what makes this episode amazing. He has a lot of wisdom to share. He's done incredible things. He's built quite the reputation for himself in becoming one of those people who has so much fun while he's making really good money while doing it. He does have a lot of responsibilities still. He bought into a plumbing wholesale supply company in 2004. And since then, it has grown quite a bit. And so we get to learn all about that and how he and his team have created raging fans for customers within that sector. And if you can do that within that sector, you're doing something right and there's something to be learned. So without further ado, here is James Calvert. Humans have been telling stories for thousands of years, and here's why. Stories activate our emotions, and whenever you combine emotion to new information, that knowledge sticks with us for a lot longer. That's why I'm on a quest to discover true modern stories by the people who live them so that we may all learn wisdom from it. My name is Cole. Thanks for joining me on the summit of Mentor Mountain. So I started, I graduated high school in 1989. I graduated on a Thursday. I started driving on a Monday uh, for, a, for a plumbing supply house up here out of Logton. Uh, mm. It's the longest summer job I've ever had. Honestly, I thought I'd be here for three months and I had a high jump scholarship and, yeah. and uh, was oh, cool. a lot of other things. And, and 35 and a half years later, I'm still there at Plumbing Wholesale, which has been a very good career for me. So, but that's the course of So, so I worked at, uh, at this Great Western Plumbing Supply and they, they have, uh, they just opened the fourth location. They're still a uh, really good business, done a really good job, a uh, good company. Um, they just, they had, uh, three brothers that were owners and another guy that was an owner. It just, Thought I could, you know, I was going to have to go somewhere else to do more. Took a short little sit as a rep. Uh, learned pretty quick I didn't want to be a rep. Came back. Oh, okay. To the wholesale side in 97 and opened a store for a company that was Plumber Supply. Uh, at the time, they later sold on and it became Ferguson. Um, so in 2004, when I came to Mountain Land, um, I, was, I was at Ferguson and then I left that and took this opportunity to come over here with, with Mountain. That's really cool. Um, what were some of the big struggles of through that journey of um, starting a franchise, transitioning it and starting, I guess, turning a page? Oh, man, we had so many. It was. <laughs> uh, so the day, day I quit and there was five of us, I think, that quit together. Um, to quit, we're on our way down to Orem to, to meet with those guys, fill out our new hire paperwork. And Bob Rasmussen, who was president of Mountain Land at the time, called and goes, Hey, I got some bad news. Uh, the building we were planning on fell through this morning. So we didn't have a building. Oh, geez. We just, we just quit our jobs. So we ended up, uh, starting in just a little space, like 3,000 square feet. He had a, had a guy that built us a building, so he had an acre yard back by his place. So he had a, a detached yard in this little space. So back then, uh, I was doing sales at the same time, and, and Jeb Pikins was doing sales. And we'd go out and, and make sales calls all morning, um, call in the orders as they came. Those The guys in the office would put together what we had, and then we had to send a truck all the way down to Orem to get everything else that we didn't have. And by the time he he would get back up north, it was 3 30, 4 o'clock, maybe 4 30. And then we'd have to pull all the orders through together and then deliver them till, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night. And then we'd have to come back and receive everything that had come in that day. So 
for the first three or four months, we were working geez, 14, 18 hours a day, seven days a week. That took a day off for the first three months. And uh, what we talk about all the time is just some really hard times, but really uh, we had we had we had a lot of fun together. We all had a good relationship. Yeah, there was a lot That's of That's cool. I, I feel like when you suffer together, you kind of <laughs> you kind of end up being friends no matter what when you suffer together <laughs> like that. No, it's, you have built a pretty good bond. That that's I'd say we're our twentieth year here at Mountain End and still build strong. That's wonderful. That's really cool. What with your sales calls, what did you guys do for sales calls as a supply company? Did you go out to sites? Yeah. Or did you usually cool. in the morning you go to a shop? Uh, so you're going to the shop, seeing you know the owner of the company and the guys, and seeing what they've got, what they're out of in their shop, maybe what they have coming up job wise. Um, if you can. I mean, the best thing is they give you an order you'd write now. Um, yeah. At times they give me items to bid or jobs to bid, and I've got this job come up on the show. You get from. So you just, you're just out there looking for opportunities, really. So yeah. we'd usually, geez, I bet, eight to 12 sales calls a morning. You know, we we're, were hustling, trying to get as much as we could. Um, and then, you know, early on, you try to sign people up with credit applications and get them set up and stuff. So growing something like that, are there any particular principles that stand out to you that you could pass on? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, keys to success are recipe. I should say recipe to success is fairly easy. Um, you know, hard work, commitment, uh, good communication, I mean, you have to be a good communicator when you're in sales, communicating with the customer, communicating with, you know, your inside sales, your dispatch, your vendors. Um, So we always preach over communication. You know, it's better to make two Mm. calls than forget to make the first one. Um, So if if you can't remember if you made the first one, make another one. Um, We try to track you as much as we can, you know, through email and stuff. So there's at least a chain. but, you know, and you, you've got to be honest. I had a, I had a uh, plumber years ago. I was, a, I was a young inside sales guy, and, you know, maybe 20, 21 years old. And uh, a guy came in. He'd been a plumber in Ogden for years and years. And he was just, he was just irate, just mad. He had been over to one of the competitors. And they had overcharged him one apart. Mm. And, uh, and he knew it. I mean, he knows what his business is. And... Uh, yeah. We went in, it's like, hey, you, you overcharged me on this part, and they would give him a credit. And they stood the ground. Nope, that's the price. And so he said, okay, uh, what's my account balance? <clears throat> they took, told him his balance. He wrote a check, paid off his account, and said, close my account. I'm done. I'll never come back. And he came straight over to where I was working, and he pointed his finger at me. He says, says James, I'm going to tell you something that you better remember your whole career said, you can share a sheep year after year, but you can only slaughter it once. So that really resonated with me. And you know, it's like, you, you're good to your customers and you treat them fair and you're honest and you follow through uh, and you'll do business with them for a long, long time. Or you can screw yeah. them. And yeah, you might have made a few extra bucks at one time, but you're done forever. And you know, we're, we're here to build long-term, lasting relationships with these guys. And I tell my guys all the time, we're here to share sheep. We're going to share sheep year after year after year is our goal. You know, we don't always show perfectly and, and we have stuff, you know, we have to we have to go make amends and eat some crow here and there. But for the, the best that we can do, we try to be a good, true partner with our customers and, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully be be what part of their success as much as they're a part of our success. So, hmm. I, Yeah, I think uh, yep. you guys are really good at that. And then also with your gratitude and, and maintaining those relationships too, you guys are very generous. I, the, the fact that, so uh, for those of you who don't know, my dad has a plumbing company who works very closely with Mountain Land. You guys are his supplier and um, 
the fact that I has as his son have a positive feeling when I think of mountain land supply when I'm not in the plumbing industry. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty impressive thing to do as a business. And uh, what? When did you guys start doing client appreciation things, and and how did that all start about and and come about? So just after just after uh, you know the recession, probably twenty twelve ish maybe. I think it was the first we we started with some cruises. Uh, nice. And Brent Anderson, our former CEO, uh, started it. You know, we we started a marketing department. We have a director of marketing named Tim White who came over. Uh, Tim was part of the Maverick marketing, um, so he was on that team that put that marketing together. And brilliant, uh, does a great job. Uh, so smart on marketing when it comes to stuff. We when he first came, you know. For us, change is, change is different, right? So it's like, we're going right. to, what? And, yeah. Uh, and it took it took a couple of years to get some traction and kind of get it going. I think that first trip that that we did, and I went on the second one. I had gone the first one. But I think the first trip, we had 13 customers that that went on that one. And uh, and that was all verticals. And we, we have several different verticals. And this mm. year, just on the plumbing trip, we will have 70 customers. We'll have another 70 on the waterworks trip. We'll have, I don't know, the irrigation trip. We have a pump trip. You know, HVNC is ridiculous. So it's yeah. really drawn for where it, where it started. And, uh, you know, so I will give I will give credit to Ren Anderson um, for bringing Tim on, putting that together, and then um, Tim's creativity of, of growing that, just watching it snowball and, and grow. And it's, it's been fun. And I bet it's on some fun, fun trips with your parents. And yeah. Got your, got your dad scuba diving and spearfishing. So we've, we've, we've built a great relationship. That's really cool. Did you, so when you first started doing those, cause you said change is hard was, I'd imagine something like that, the, positive response not being immediate with the business um but have you been able over the years to see that those gratuities pay back the business or oh, yeah. or no we started yet uh sales sales by in we got customer buying in and then as as those started to grow then we got vendor buying and then all of a sudden we had mm. I want to be a part of this. You know, what can I do to help? And, and uh, on every one of our trips, we have probably at least a dozen vendors that are not only there as a part of the trip, but they're helping us sponsor it and take uh, take some of that cost away from us. But I don't know. We it's it's really funny because we usually on the trips we'll announce where the next trip is, and mm-hmm. uh, it's it's. You know, the p- pandemic set us set us back a little bit. We had a trip to Spain and a trip to Scotland that got canceled because of the Holy pandemic. Cow. But we were, we had just come back from Fiji. Um, so the year before, and I was with the plumbing group, and we were in Costa Rica, I believe. And uh, Tim announced, "Hey, if you guys qualify uh, next year, the trip's going to be in Fiji." And it was funny because almost every single wife turned to their husband. <laughs> I'm going to feed. He's out, but I'm going to feed. Oh, that's hilarious! And so, not only have we build some amazing relationships with our customers, but like wives are our best friends, and we got groups of of customers that compete against each other that are getting together for barbecues and um, wow, spending time together, going on vacations together. They refer work back and forth, and it's it's really become powerful. Um, and it's it's all across the board. It's, it's the excavators, the HVC guys, the plumbing guys. It's you know they've just developed this bond that has been pretty pretty neat to watch. That's really cool. It's it's one thing to get together as a networking event, but another thing to be able to have those relationships develop organically 
you know, on a cruise or just doing something fun and, and relationships really, I think are the currency of life in, in a big, big way. Hey, really quick. If you are a fan of high achievers and their stories, please subscribe to the show. If you haven't already, that will be all. Thanks. So that's, that's a really cool opportunity you guys have provided for people to experience, man. So it sounds like, cause, cause whenever I hear James Calvert, I just think of, man, that's the guy that just goes off and does like awesome, fun things and, and has figured out how to, um, make a living doing enjoyable things, but it wasn't always that way. You had to really work hard to get to the point, And I'm sure you still do because you're solving big problems right now. Um, I did this bad reputation of that, but <laughs> oh, we're on LinkedIn and I joke around that it sells calls and, and uh, but that was, no, it, so funny. it was a lot of years of a lot of hard work and sacrifice. And uh, yeah. I, I always tell everybody that, you know, we negotiate somebody to come work here. And, and uh, it's like, look, I wrote a very big check to come work here. You know? Yeah. yeah. I put like, big. and I had on the line to come to this company. And uh, and worked very hard to get in. And a lot of these younger guys, they, they don't remember that. It's funny, I like I go into the, Caseville store, and I, I office out of far west, so it's not so much here, but I go to the Caseville store, which was originally my original Layton store, and like half the people, you know, I, I just don't know anymore, you know, we just, we guys that were there have been promoted, and, yeah. uh, you know, there's just not that original foundation that's in that branch, and they're like, who are you, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, just flip this thing. You know, I've got, I've got some fun to the store. But. That's so funny. What was yeah. it like when you wrote that big check? Were you married at the time? Yeah, um, I was married. What did your wife think? She thought I was an idiot. <laughs> but she trusted you enough to do it. No. Um, or, or did you just do it? <laughs> I just hear it. Um, <laughs> hey, I knew... I knew that the guys that I had that were going to make this jump with me were as dedicated as I was going to be. They mm. were, uh, they had relationships. We had relationships. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story how this whole thing went down. So, so put the deal together. Um, and the day I quit, the regional manager, um, uh, it is. I, I hate to put com- throw companies under the bus, so I'll save it. Anyway. But you can look it up. One of the biggest supply houses in the country by far. Um, mm. Like, we're the 800 pound gorilla. We are going to crush you. You will be out of business in six months. And, and this is in a, in a building that I built, you know, because I opened a store mm. in 97 for Plumber Supply and had. Not just me, but we had a good team that that built a, a very successful ranch, and mm-hmm. uh, so when we opened up, we opened up straight across the street in this little corner while our building was being built, and our building got done maybe ten months later. We moved into there, and a year and a half later, after he told me he was going to squash us, they closed that ranch. We were at the bad uh. at the time. And we were we were killing it, but what what I want that hopefully it comes across the value of relationship. We had the relationship, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, General Pikins had amazing amount of relationships. I feel I had good relationships. The guys that came came with us had really good relationships. We'd been in that area for a long time, and it built a pretty good reputation, and. So just because somebody's the biggest or the big guy doesn't mean you can't be successful. You be successful with hard work and just being honest and taking care care of your gals. That's what people are looking for. And uh, it was it was a great day. The day we got the news that they were closing that ranch. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, we, we felt, in all honesty, you're scared to death. You know, it's like, oh, gonna, yeah. We're going to get a chance to put you out of this thing. I just, I just put everything I have in savings into this place. And yeah. you're telling me in six months, I'm going to lose it all. Mm. Anyway, we did. And maybe that was just motivation for it. Um, yeah, right. That's uh, uh, David and Goliath's story. So that's, oh, that's such a, that's a good feeling. Not that you want people to fail, right? But you want, you want to be right, right? Because <laughs> you did yeah, sacrifice sure. so much. And for someone to tell you that, I mean, that's either going to fire you up or, or just beat you to the ground. And sounds like it fired you guys up a little bit. And I'm, I'm sure it scared you. <laughs> yeah, I know what. We were nervous and we were like, oh crap, man, we poked the bear. But yeah. We we had a lot of faith in uh, what we had, uh, who we knew, and our ability, you know, so it worked out really well. Man, that's awesome. Did your, uh, was your wife forgiving in the end? <laughs> I'm sure she was, but how did that play out? No, I don't. I'm sure. I so I was all four. I got divorced in '08. So I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Um, so she didn't get to reap the benefits. Darn it! No, she had to go through all the all that crap work of me working all the time, <laughs> building. You know. Yeah. I know. It. All right, on. So, yeah, just being honest, working hard, maintaining mm-hmm. relationships. At what point did you start to see the benefits of doing client appreciation events? Uh, I think right off the bat. Um, oh, that's cool. I think as soon as that first group got back and the interaction from the people that were there, um, yeah. our CEO, Red at the time, came back really excited and he'd build a relationship with people he didn't know. Yeah. And at the time, I was the plumbing sales manager for the whole company, and I did I didn't know your dad at that time, and should have. I mean, he was he was a plumber doing a lot of work, and that's when I met your dad. Brent's like, "Hey, I've got a guy you need to meet. You guys, I think you guys will will uh, get along really, really well." And that's <laughs> we went to launch, and then we started down the hunting and spear fishing, and I don't know if your your mother probably is mad at me because I think I've cost your dad a lot of money. But <laughs> it goes both ways. Yeah. Oh, he, he's definitely. A lot of money. So it's not just me. I'm innocent too. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so I, I think about 2012-ish is when I met your dad. And, and then so I had some other customers off of that. And then I went on the next trip and, and met some more guys. Uh, and, yeah, we just we – just, have made some amazing relationships. And I, I'm not even talking work stuff, like away from work, people that truly care about how your family's doing both ways, you know? And, yeah. uh, you know, it's 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 an amazing thing. It's been very powerful. And then we just, uh, the group started to get too big and we had everybody lumped together. And that's why I was like, we got to have a plumbing group and a waterworks group. And then when we, when we broke that out, I think it even took another all of a sudden lot. The vendors were like, because vendors would go and be like, well, I'm a plumbing vendor, but I get stuck with an irrigation guy and a water on this domain. Oh, yeah. So once we started breaking them out, you know, we could have plumbing guys with plumbers and water ups guys with excavators and so on. It really helped, you know, yeah. recruit vendors and stuff like that. And they just snowballed and like I said, Tampa's done a really good job, you know, when you get a destination like a Fiji out there and uh and it gets pretty easy for people to be like, Okay, I think I could I get used to this. <laughs> like I said, yeah. you get you get the wife's buy in and and then it's it's been good. Oh, uh, that's way cool. And uh it reminds me of a book, it's called Networking with millionaires which is kind of a the title sounds really shallow but it's all based upon being that person that you can 
help people grow their business. And it sounds like you guys are a lot more than just a supply company. You guys are the middleman that helps everybody grow their business. And you can put people in touch with so-and-so because so-and-so has this need that can help you with this. And, and, uh, that that's just a life changing thing for a lot of people. And I'm sure that's why Mountainland Supply Company has such a good feeling when you think of Mountainland Supply, you think of you have that good feeling because um because it's more than just what you guys are offering in your business, right? More than just we think so supplies. We selfishly I guess we think so. Um we, we've seen a lot of these customers help each other um, on the business side. Uh, I'm not talk, talking off the side of the business. Um, mm -hmm. We've had guys that get on on trips and they start talking about how they're they're doing coaching and they're doing some stuff like that. And then pretty soon uh, that customer is getting coached by the same coach that the customer is telling them about it, you know. And, uh, and then... Now they're collaborating on some stuff together and it's it's been kind of amazing the stuff that has come out of just our customers being together that's really cool and i think that gives um there there is satisfaction when you supply a need to a business but when you supply needs like that outside of your scope of of value um and and, and bringing that additional value to things that it creates a much better environment within yourself to um, for me when when things like that happen it's just energizing right you have more motivation to keep going because when it's just a clock in uh, clock in and clock out just get them their parts that they need and and be done with it it's not as satisfying but um, it, it definitely brings more meaning for sure um, and, and that's not to discount the supplies because whenever I, I read business books, right, they're always talking about how important the supplier is and the supplier is just kind of that nucleus uh, of, of, uh, of, of importance. And, and we saw that a lot with in, in 2020. Um, but then just the relationships on top of it is incredible too. Um, what was it like when you were scaling the franchise and, and growing it was it easier since did mountain land have much of a, 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 a big enough system that was intricate to just bring on new guys and have them trained and have a system that way or did you guys have to map out your systems yourselves uh, i wish i could say we were smart enough to map it out um we let's go with adjust it <laughs> okay <laughs> Because it, as you grow, it becomes a lot more cumbersome than you realize. Um, mm. So when I came, when I came, let's see, I see all ranches there were maybe eight, um, and maybe two hundred employees, and now we have mm. two ranches and over a thousand employees. Uh, That's just wild. We were just in the state of Utah, and now we're in seven states. We had four or five verticals, and now we have 14. Um, when you say verticals, what does that mean? So plumbing, plumbing is a vertical, HVAC, water, gotcha. water for irrigation, ag irrigation, so on. Gotcha. So, some stuff we've stumbled into, like we have a, we have a truck outfitter company. And honestly, we just started it because we could get our truck beds back in time from the guy that was doing our fabrication. So we looked mm. to it, figured we could do it pretty cheap, save a bunch of money internally. Uh, yeah. And got going and then quickly realized that every one of our customers, for the most part, has a truck that's custom outfit with a white rack, bands, bed, whatever. And now we have 20 employees in just that vertical. You know, they're doing spray and bed lighters and all sorts of Man. truck lifts, wheels, and tires. And then, and then we started buying our tires at Colts. We bought a uh, mechanic shop 
right there by our store in 33rd and hired the mechanic. And now we do all our own in-house maintenance. Uh, and now all the parts we buy also. You know, so just just stuff like that we've we've been open to. You know, we buy the electric motor shop uh, that benefits most of our verticals, to be honest with you. Uh, mm. So we just we've looked for opportunities and and been, been able to capitalize on some that have been really really good for us. But as far as scaling, it, we try to look at we're doing a better job looking ahead now. Like um, we just added some sales managers to some verticals to gear up for um, some anticipated growth we have coming up on some some things. Um, mm. So we're trying to be a little bit more proactive. We've been deactive for for far too long, so we're trying to get a little bit ahead of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, when you work for a big corporation, corporation, you're like, man, what are all these layers for? Why do they have all these layers? And surely, uh, quickly to realize they're there for a reason, you know. And we're we're getting to that point where we've had to layer up a little bit. Um, you still see we're pretty approachable and, you know, you can call our CEO or any of us on the executive team pretty easy. So we're, we're right here in the late tab with phone numbers. Um, yeah, gets to be a lot and we have good people. So we, we, we've, uh, we've developed a lot of people that have come internally, uh, people that have been here for a long time, you know, wait, as you grow, you, you hire people from your competition and we, we've mm. plenty of that for sure. Um, well, uh, but our best way for us is to grow somebody. I, and I've got a I've got a good friend that works here at Far West right now. And he you know, a few years ago he was working for a water district. Hey, I want to come do sales for you. It's like, yeah, he just free hard just come do sales. So hmm. he started as a driver and you know came through and and uh, he's over the warehouse and doing dispatch and stuff here now. And soon he'll be he'll be on the counter and inside guy and long that's long from that side. But it's just like nobody dreams of being in plumbing wholesale distribution. You know, it's like my life goals didn't work out, so that's what I got stuck with this. But it's that's yeah. uh, that's a great industry and it's it's been wonderful for for us here and Mount Ed, you feel it's the best couple out there. So. Yeah, you guys have done absolutely incredible. Um, who? So when you guys were layering and mapping out those systems, did you hire an assistant to help you annotate all of those things that you guys talked about and, and put them into something? Or how does that even work? Because I feel like, especially with how much you guys have grown in that amount of time, mm. that is an incredible amount of information to have mapped out. So uh, how did you practically you ever, do it? You ever heard of the Vistage group? No. So you gotta look into Vistage. Vistage is a, is a group of CEOs that get together and it's nationwide. They're all over. It's just with a good friend of mine from Seattle and he's at a Vistage group up there, uh, which kind of interesting. He's uh, the CEO of Sour Patch Kids, whatever company that is, is in his Vistage. Nice. And, uh, so Brent Anderson years ago got in this Vistage group with much CEOs from around all Utah, and we met a guy named Quentin Rogers, who was the facilitator, um, and he now coaches all of us on the executive team. Quint was a he's a bright dude. He was uh, he was over um, for NASA. He was over the International Space Station for the United States. So he had to deal with all the other countries, had to deal with all the vendors. Um, you know, he had, to, he, had to, he had to go in and help Boeing on a bunch of big projects and stuff like that. Wow. Just an amazing guy. Anyway, he was from Texas, retired, moved to Park City, wanted to get into coaching, got with the Vistich, uh, met Brent, and turned his, his uh, help us and then he taught us about a management system called the OS. Uh, we, we operate and did the OS system. But Quentin really has helped us a ton sit down and map out, okay, what does this look like? And for me one day, I was, I, 
was going to meet with him in Salt Lake. And um, I was in there working on a bit for a plumber. And he comes walking in and said, hey, just give me one second, I'm almost done. I get done, he's like, so what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I had this plumber. Uh, it's getting a bid for. He's like, "What are you doing a bid? What do you mean?" He's like, um, "We need to we need to break down your team." So, <laughs> sort of break it down team and found some gaps. And he, he was like, "No disrespect, but you don't have time to be doing bids right now. You you got to start mm. further out and on a higher level. And then we've we've got to get some guys in place, you know, to get you." Off of, off of seller at, um, you know, smaller stuff, which honestly I, I hear mess because it was fun to have those relationships. But, uh, here, yeah. you know, if we're going to grow this, we've got to bring people up and get them in place to have that foundation and continue to grow that foundation as, as we grow. So yeah, probably, probably couldn't for me on my team as bad as, uh, influential as anybody, um, and like I said, he coaches our whole executive team. So I probably sit, he uh, pretty safe to speak that he's influenced us all. That's really cool. What uh, what were the main challenges? Was, was it hard to find talent to ref, to replace you guys and, and add those layers in and bring people up and have them trained? Or were there... Well, it wasn't hard to identify, but what was hard was to replace the guys you had, you had identified, right? So... Oh, yeah. We bring a, we bring a guy up. We're bringing up top sales phones, right? Yeah. We move somebody out of sales who's one of your top guys. And it actually worked out really good because in most cases, we were replacing them with two or three salesmen. Um that were then going out and had time for to find some new business and, and make some new relationships. So it actually actually benefited us in the wall run, you know, took mm. some time, but we had some young hungry sales guys. They, they were giving us some really good accounts that they had built, but then they still had to go down and find some new business and, and build that where the guy that got promoted, he didn't have time to go find new business. He was booked out. So mm. yeah, it was a, it was a good eye opener for us too that, we needed to look at our really uh, top sales guys, and you know, if they're booked out, we've got we've got to break out some accounts and get some some new sales guys out there looking for for business. You know, business. What 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 do you think is the hardest? Because um, you made the comment, no one no one grows up and aspires to work for a supply company like a plumbing supply company or in whatnot. What is it hard to find? people um just for the delivery jobs yes and things like that so the entry level jobs are the toughest you, you get just, i don't know two out of 20 you need to stick you know, mm. or it seems like eight out of 20 don't even show up for the interview <laughs> it's just a rat race but when you can get guys that um can can see ahead you know because we're at esop Employee old company, and uh, we get guys to stay for a, for a year and get that first stock statement. Oh crap! There's something deep. In case you're wondering, ESOP stands for Employee Stock Ownership Program. Uh, yeah, entry levels entry levels tough for us. If we get guys here in in counter positions and above, we we rarely lose somebody. Um, you know, you'll you'll have your occasional one that you will for sure, but. Like my outside guys, um, they're they're pretty solid. My inside guys are pretty solid. So we have that's really cool. We have a good team. But yeah, the man, the core branch managers and assistant managers that are looking for drivers warehouse. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm not chasing those guys right now. Excelling stuff. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that one bit, and and just thinking of what I've seen from the business owners just that I've watched growing up, I've told myself, man, I don't know if I could ever do just HR, HR management, yeah. um, on, on any layer. <laughs> it's yeah. just, we have, that's just a rough the HR director. She does such a cool job. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, that's already 
<laughs> you have to be such an incredible person to be able to handle that stuff, man. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, really impressive. I'm, I'm glad you guys have a good one. It sounds like she does. Um, she, does. She, she keeps us all straight. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, what, so what's the plans in the future? Yeah, we are looking to grow. Uh, we have, we have a couple opportunities that we're looking into right now. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking to grow our verticals. We're, uh, I had a rock class quarter to identify some vertical integration. So in our existing brick of order, where are we lacking on say hydronics, you know, say, mm-hmm. so we spent the whole quarter identifying stores and different inventory uh, items that we should have in them or what they should, what they want. And now we're implementing that in quarter two, we're fiscal year. So this is our second quarter. Um, so we're looking to grow internally with what we already have. We're looking to grow externally with some uh, acquisition opportunities. We're building a store in Nephi. I know I can say that one out loud now. So it's, I think, pretty much has our name on it. Uh, nice. We have a have a store going in Nephi, Nephi, and uh, we opened in Logan uh, this year. Um, and yeah, we're looking at several several location opportunities. Um, so our CEO has always said, west of the Mississippi, Canada to Mexico. So somewhere in there, mm. we're looking. Why those locations specifically? I don't know. Supply chain just gets hard, I guess, if you get out, get further further east. But that's kind of what he's identified is, um, you know, let's try to keep them strong. So we're in Kansas and Missouri. We have, we have stores out there. We had an acquisition out there a couple of years ago. So uh, adding some verticals out there. We had waterworks and we're working on pumps to those guys right now. So. Nice. Just trying to take, That's take uh, awesome. some opportunities to them and hopefully help them do it. Uh, we bought a drilling uh, supply company last year, horizontal drilling, and something honestly none of us knew anything about. And it's it's been fun to learn. It's been fun to learn a new industry. I I love learning about other stuff like that. You know, I put over H V C four years ago and I didn't I didn't grow up in H V C and I was tell us well, well this is Chinese to me, so you guys have to dumb this stuff down, you know, and I'm here to help you guys. I'll help you any way I can, but man, I, I yeah. you gotta talk basic, you know. So in the drilling, the same thing. It's been it's been fun to get in and, and learn, learn the customers, learn the business, learn the products. Uh, definitely not an expert by any means, but uh, the opportunities have been really fun to see what's out there. Is that what motivates you to keep going from your personal position, yeah. or what motivates you to keep growing and and going? Uh, oh, there's a thousand families in this company that I feel obligated to be on my best every day that I can't, um, you know, and then and it's just every, every one of our thousand employees is in the same boat. We're all employee owners and we get out of bed and we go to work for our customers and we go to work for each other. Um, and if any of us isn't successful, the, the whole, whole company's not successful. We need everybody on their A game all day long um, that doesn't always happen, but you know, when we did the ESOP in 2018, it was really fun to listen to the employees almost overnight go from they and them to we and our. They, they talk wow. about something me that it's our couple, you know, and uh, we have a, we have a saying here all the time about land as a lawn, and uh, an email will go out for people asking for help, and shortly after it goes out, usually it's you know. They'll get follow up email that this has been handled, you know, as one. And uh, we really do view anybody in this company, any of our vendors, any of our customers that has an issue that's our issue. Um, because we are as one. And if we don't have everybody together, we're not successful. So we have, we have city water guys that call us at two in the morning for a water line break. You know, their problem is our problem. And, uh, you know, we, we have emergency lines, after hour lines, 
Um, I live close to a store. There's probably not a weekend if I can tell that I'm not in store. I get calls every weekend. You know, I have to defer a lot of those. But um, yeah, we feel there's nothing above any of us. You know, we'll we'll work the counter. We'll we'll make the delivery. Um, everybody here is to is uh, has the same common goal, which is traction, which is EOS to be successful. You know, uh, the goal of the company is the goal of every individual. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. That's a powerful thing that not very many companies have have been able to achieve, but I, I guess with the the ESOP is what helped with that. ESOP's been been good culture. You know, every everything revolves around good culture. You know, we yeah. talk about it. If somebody's not a good culture fit, they just can't work here. And we haven't mm. I had to say goodbye to some employees here. Uh, that just work a good culture fit, and we just we just can't have it. We can't we can't let it affect what we have going on. Um, yeah, like I said, we don't do everything perfectly, but we do a lot really well, and our our, uh, our people are we feel the best in the industry. That's that's great. Um, what with the with the culture. How would you articulate Mountainland's culture? Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. We all talk crap on each other so bad. If you was around us, you probably think we liked each other. Um, <laughs> and if any of us was nice to somebody else, we were, we'd think they were mad at you. Um, <laughs> lasting friendships, you know? Like, people really care about the people they work with. Uh, the different stores, you know, just to see the potlucks and the lunches and the uh, parties they throw for a birthday or an anniversary or, um, man, just the support we give their fellow employees. It's it's amazing, you know, and you hear what some of these guys do. And uh, it's it's a cool thing to watch, you know. I, I, learn, I learn a lot from my fellow coworkers. Fellow owners, I would really want to say that uh, just about how to be a better person because we have a lot of really good people here that look out for for others, and it's uh, it's pretty impressive to see. That's wonderful, and it sounds like you had that cohesion when you first started too with your partners that you went in on this venture with. Yeah. How did you? It was kind of funny, you know, like, you know, late when we did, we had that tight knit group, uh, yeah. you know, to some of the people that had been here, we were these outsiders coming in, oh. you know, coming into our company. And so it, it really took a little while to break that barrier with some of those guys, uh, some of the old school guys. And, you know, we eventually did and built good relationships with those guys too, but yeah, the initial thing was like, yeah. don't come in here and start mixing stuff up, you know. It was How did you guys handle that? 20 years ago. I, I still had good hair back then. <laughs> is that where it went to? Oh, is yes. <laughs> There really is a cool feeling when you think of Mountainland Supply. And even my wife's like, oh, yeah, Mountainland's cool. <laughs> we have these hats and these hoodies, you know, and it's – there. It's a pretty impressive thing that you guys have done to to have that. So. It's fun, you know, just like the ice fishing derby. Um, oh man, you know, I love that. We're really looking for something innovative, number one, but something that we can get people together that hopefully enjoy. Honestly, when yeah, we came up with that idea last year. We thought, you know, maybe there'll be eighty or a hundred people show up. It's six hundred and fifty people show up to that thing. That's and so crazy. We'll have over a thousand this year. And it's, oh man, that's it is. It's just crazy on some of this stuff. You know, we used to do a coyote derby. Uh, <laughs> you ever heard about that? But that no, it just honestly got too big. And again, we started it as kind of a joke, but it was going yeah. coyotes. And uh, we had thirty six teams our first year, and I think our fifth year was the last year we did it. We had three hundred fifty teams. And our Whoa! Five grand and two guns, and it just it just got too hard to manage, and it's 
Brent was like, well, yeah, we're a supply house. We don't run derbies. So, <laughs> but, holy cow. So fun. Had I known, I probably would have been on one of those teams. Yeah. That's really cool. It was fun. We, we have customers all the time. Please read about that Coyote Derby. That was so, so much fun. So that's awesome. Well, yeah. So your marketer is still with you. That original marketer that came up with. Yeah. That's and really cool. He's, uh, he's our director of marketing. I think he has seven or eight people uh, under him in just marketing. Yeah, we do. I, was, I was at an event at our HVAC store this morning uh, cooking scones and sausages for customers. And, and our team just shows up that it's set up and it's ready to go. And they're, they're phenomenal. That's way cool, man. Well, James Calvert, thank you so much for doing this and sharing all of all of this information. I it definitely, I think helps the people who are in those growth situations with their company or, or just find it, figuring out which way they want to go. And, and hopefully if you're uh, in the, if you're a contractor out here in Utah listening to this, you'd consider Mountain Land as your supply company. And uh, again, James, thank you so much. No, thank you. I appreciate you thinking of me. Yeah, of course. If you thought of anybody while you were listening to this episode who'd benefit, please send it to them. That would just make my day. That's, that's the reason why this podcast exists. Now, the second best way to make me happy is to subscribe to the show and leave a review on the podcast platform where you listen. If you're on YouTube, definitely subscribe to the channel, like the video. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Have a good one and just keep going out there. No matter what you're going through, everything's going to be okay if you keep moving. That's it. See you later. Bye.